Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for joining me today to another soldering tutorial. Today we're actually going to be soldering the WHDTS uh, smart card kit. We'll see what everything comes in, walk you through all the steps, and of course, uh, there will be no soundtrack on this video because, well, you might be doing it at home or you might be doing it in school. Or wherever it might be, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll walk you guys to, through this step by step um, through each of these components. So again, hopefully you guys enjoy it and let's get started. All right, so let's open up the, all the contents from the bag. As you're checking all your components, be careful not to lose them. As a matter of fact, they're so small that I, I often left some of them inside the bag and I was wondering where did I misplace these components? Where did I leave the resistors? Where did I leave these little spacers? Well, go to find out. They were still stuck in the bag. So keep track of where they are. Keep track of where everything is. Let's open up the instructions right now. You'll notice that on the back is the car runway. This is where you're going to test your vehicle once you've completed it. There's a QR code provided in the package in case you want a digital copy of the instructions. Read the instructions before you begin this project. Take a look at the components list and make sure that you have the right amount of components. After checking to make sure I got all my components, I try to find all of the resistors. There are three sets of resistors, and if you look at them carefully, you'll notice that they have different color bands. Use the resistor color chart to verify the nominal resistance of each set of resistors. I wrote down the nominal resistance on each of the tags. The first steps of our project will be the most detail demanding and the most technical out of all of them, I think. I will have warning signals to remind you of the most important details as you're assembling this project. Make sure you're looking at the back of your PCB. Let's start by putting the bolt into the PCB. Next, place the nut on the bolt. You can tighten it by hand, or if you want, you can use a screwdriver, but it does not need a whole lot of force to tighten. Next, place the cap over it. Make sure it's nice and tight. And again, you don't need any screwdrivers or any special tools in this step. Caution. Get ready for this step. This is actually one of the most detail-oriented steps I could possibly think of for this project. Make sure you're looking at the back of your PCB. Find the infrared LED and locate the positive leg, the anode. You're going to place the anode right there as shown on your screen. Notice how I'm not pushing the infrared LED all the way. I'm actually matching it with the color of the cap. Pause the video here to see. I'm using a small little box to prop my project up. I don't have a table vise with me at the moment, so I'm gonna rely on this little box to help me hold things up. This also prevents the LED from moving out of its position.
Notice how my LED stay level with the color of the cap. Let's get to soldering the second infrared LED. Place the anode in the location shown. Again, you want to match the height of the LED with the color of the cap. Pause the video here to see. Solder carefully and make sure your LED does not move out of its position height-wise. You'll notice right here that the two LEDs are at the same height as the color of the cap. Pause the video here to see. Okay, take a quick mental break because we're about to begin the second half of this technical step. At this point, we've done the two infrared LEDs. Get ready because we're now going to assemble the two photoresistors. Notice how we're still facing the back side of the PCB. Insert your photoresistor. The photoresistor must be at the same height as the LED and should match the color of the cap. Pause the video here to see. Solder carefully so that the photoresistor does not move out of its position height-wise. Now let's do the same for the second photoresistor. The photoresistor must be at the same height as the LED and should match the color of the cap. Solder carefully so that the photoresistor does not move out of its position height-wise. Pause the video here to see. Now flip the PCB over to the front. Use your diagonal cutters to cut the excess leads.
This is pretty much the conclusion of one of the hardest steps in this project. So let's move on to some easier ones. I'm going to start with my first set of resistors. I'm going to bend the leads of each of those four resistors before installing them. The 51 ohm resistors belong in the R5, R6, R11, and R12 locations marked on the front of the PCB. The 1000 ohm resistors belong in the R7 and R8 locations marked on the PCB. The 10 ohm resistors belong in the R9 and R10 locations marked on the PCB. Always double check which resistor you're inserting into which location. Once you check that you have all the resistors in the right location, you can now commit to soldering. Caution. Avoid cutting the photoresistors. Once again, avoid cutting the photoresistors. Be careful of what you're doing while clipping away excess leads. Next, we're going to solder the IC socket. The socket has a notch. This notch should face the front of the vehicle. That same notch is marked on the PCB. Make sure they both match one another. Solder carefully. Make sure that as you solder, you're not bridging contacts. Next, we're going to install the variable trimmer aka potentiometers. Solder carefully, and when you're done soldering, make sure you place your solder iron back in its holster. Now let's get to the transistors. Use the needle nose pliers to bend the base lead back. Do the same for the second transistor. Place them in the right direction as shown by the PCB markings.
solder and trim the leads. Let's move on to the red LEDs. Find the anode, the long leg. The long leg is gonna face towards the inside of the PCB as shown. If your LED does not go in all the way, don't force it in as you might break the LED. Just leave it as is and solder carefully. Notice how the positive leads face towards the center of the PCB. Once you check that the LEDs are in the proper position, solder away. Once they're soldered, trim the excess leads. Let's get on with our electrolytic capacitors. Notice how the cathode is marked by the white band. Match the negative lead to the white marking on the PCB. Do the same for the second electrolytic capacitor. Notice how the markings of the electrolytic capacitors are facing the front of the vehicle. Flip the board over and begin to solder. Caution. Avoid cutting the photoresistors. Once again, avoid cutting the photoresistors. Be careful of what you're doing while clipping away excess leads. Up next, we're going to install the push button onto the PCB. When installing the push button, be sure to push down from its body, not the button itself. This will help avoid any damage. Solder carefully and make sure not to bridge any contacts. Remember, bridging can cause short circuits, rendering your circuit useless.
In the following step, we're going to install the wiring for the motors. If you have wire strippers, now is the time to have them ready. We're going to split this cable into two parts. Grab your diagonal cutters and cut right down the middle. Now pull away gently and it should come apart real easily. Now grab one of your sets of wire strands. Use the diagonal cutters to begin a split down the middle of those two wires. Next, pull them apart about an inch away. Now let's do the same for the back side. Use the wire cutters to make a slit down the middle and pull away about one inch apart. This next step is way easier if you have a wire stripper. If you only have a diagonal cutter, what you can do is score the insulation as I'm showing you here. Don't close the wire cutter all the way. Just have it semi open so that you're only cutting away the insulation and then pull. Once you expose the wire, twist the strands so that they don't pull apart. You're going to re repeat the same step to each end of the wires. Strip away all the insulation and then twist the exposed wire so it doesn't pull apart. Using a wire stripper is way better than using a wire cutter. Trust me on this one. So if you have one, use it. Grab your other set of wires. You're going to repeat the previous steps the same way. Use the diagonal cutters to begin a split down the middle of those two wires. Next, pull them apart about an inch away. Now let's do the same for the back side. Use the wire cutters to make a slit down the middle and pull away about one inch apart. Use your wire strippers or the wire cutters to strip away the insulation exposing the wire. Once the wire is exposed, twist away so that the strands don't pull apart. Repeat the same step three more times for each end of the wires. Once you have your wires ready to go, you can now insert them into the PCB. Place one end into the anode and the second one into the cathode. Flip your board over to the back side and you can begin soldering. While soldering, be sure not to bridge the contacts. If the wires protrude too far from the PCB, be sure to trim them. Next, insert the second wire harness into the location marked on the PCB. One of the wires goes into the negative cathode and the second one goes into the positive anode. Flip your board over to the back side and you can begin soldering. While soldering, be sure not to bridge the contacts.
After soldering, if your wires protrude too far from the PCB, you should probably trim those. Let's solder on the battery clip. Notice how it's got an anode and a cathode. The anode is the red wire, while the cathode is the black wire. Notice how the red wire goes into the positive, and the black one goes into the negative. Once you know your wires are in the proper location, flip the board over and solder them on. Now that you solder the leads of the battery clip onto the PCB, Take the battery clip and flip it under and over the PCB. Remove the skin from the adhesive. Line up the battery clip with the markings on the PCB. Once you're sure that it's in the right location, press down gently to make sure the sticker adheres to the PCB. All right, so let's get going with the warm gears and installing those onto the shaft of the motors. Place the back of your motor flat up against the surface of the table. Then place the warm gear on top of it where the shaft is and push down. All the force that you're putting down on the Warm gear should be going down towards the table. This prevents the motor from snapping or breaking. Repeat this same step with the second motor and second warm gear. Next, take your O-rings and your wheels. Pop the O-rings onto the wheels. Now we're going to press fit the shaft into a wheel. Check out how I'm actually installing the shaft onto the wheel. I'm actually using the table as a place for me to put pressure and to hold the pin down as I'm pushing it in. Be careful not to push that wheel all the way through the shaft. The tip of the shaft should match the outside of the wheel. Repeat that again for the second wheel and second shaft. For this step, you're going to need four screws and four gaskets, and of course, your screwdriver. Here's what you're going to achieve in this step. You're going to take your screws and put them through the front. And on the back side, you're going to screw them onto the gaskets, like so. Once you're finished installing all your screws and gaskets, it's going to look like this. Now we need to install the three-way sleeves onto the screws. As you're installing your three-way sleeves, 
Make sure you don't over tighten to prevent damage to the plastic. Once you're done installing all the sleeves, it should look like this. Notice how they all line up in the same direction so that you can actually mount the wheel and axles. Take your wheel and axle and install a gasket. Insert the wheel and axle through one of the sleeves. Then slide it right through the gear. That gear needs to be press fitted onto the shaft. So set your car sideways as I show here and start to push down gently onto the shaft. Push down until you get it into the right position. We're gonna repeat the same procedure for the second wheel and axle. Take your wheel and axle and install a gasket. Insert the wheel and axle through one of the sleeves. Then slide it right through the gear. That gear needs to be press fitted onto the shaft. So set your car sideways as I show here and start to push down gently onto the shaft. Push down until you get it into the right position. Your wheel and gear assembly should spin freely as shown here. Let's turn our attention to the wires, which need to be attached to the motors. Take a look at this image. This image shows the direction in which all the motors should face forward. Notice how the leads are facing towards the front of the car. Once you know the leads of your motor are facing towards the front of the vehicle, you can now screw them on to the PCB. Now we need to solder the wires onto the motors. In this step, you must remember to keep your wires from twisting. Notice how I'm showing you in which direction the wires will go. I'm not twisting them in any way. They're always facing in the same direction. Otherwise, your motors could definitely go in backwards. Insert one of the wires on the left lead, and then followed by the second wire onto the right lead. Once your wires are placed in the right position, you may not solder them on. Be careful not to melt the plastic of the motor. Now we're going to repeat the same process to the second motor. Make sure that you're not confusing your wires, I mean you're getting them mixed up. Keep them in the same direction as you solder them onto the PCB. Check it out you guys, now that everything is soldered on, your cables are on the right position, we can now move on to the final step, which is pretty much installing our 555 timer. If the leads of your 555 timer are bent, use your needle nose pliers to bend them back into the right direction. Do so gently as not to break them off. Don't forget that this IC chip also has a notch. That notch should be going towards the front of the vehicle. Install it onto the IC socket. All right, let's get to testing our car. Let's put on some AA batteries and see if it actually works. 
All right, you probably want to do this on the floor because as soon as you press the button, it's going to kick and do a wheelie, but it should definitely follow the car runway. Check it out, guys. That's pretty cool, right? It works. All right, well, thanks for joining me today, guys, with this video tutorial. And, of course, I want you guys to remember that those photoresistors are super important. Make sure that they are five millimeters away from the bottom of this caster all right so make sure that the led is level with that line right there and the photoresistors are on the back side here but just keep that in mind as you're building this all right and there you guys go whoa get off the track <laughs> make sure those photoresistors are able to see the track so they're about five millimeters close to or from the top of that caster. All right, so hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.